Hi everyone, Late Blight here. Okay, predictably a lot of people, uh, I made a video some time ago um, called How to Make Let's Play Videos, and predictably a lot of people asked me about Windows Vista, and how do I get it to work in Vista. Uh, I didn't have an answer for them because I myself have, hadn't been able to get it to work in Vista. I have been trying for months now to get uh, mixing uh, what the, the audio from a program with microphone audio. I've been trying for months to get that to work in Vista, and it was mostly my own stupidity and ignorance that prevented me from being able to do it correctly. Uh, I went through several sound cards because a lot of it depends on the kind of sound device that you have. So I bought like half a dozen different sound cards from my local fries and tried them out, and none of them worked. The last card that I tried actually splurged 50 bucks on a um, a, uh, a sound director XFi Extreme Audio, and it didn't work. And finally, I found out that the stupid little dinky onboard, like on the motherboard sound chip that my motherboard came with, would work all along. The key is, uh, let me go ahead and bring up my uh, recording devices. In Vista, you right click on your volume control and click on recording devices, you get this. So, the key is this, stereo mix. Now, this you need to have. You need to have essentially a device like this. Um, by default, it's probably, um, hidden, like, um, uh, yeah, basically you might need to right click down here and turn on show disabled or disconnected devices to get it to show up. This is what you need, you need to have a device like this. Now not all sound cards have this, um, some, some cards call it what you hear. So you know, the most common names are, uh, I have a, obviously Realtek sound chip on my motherboard, uh, Realtek mostly seems to call it stereo mix, typically. Uh, I think Sound Blasters or other types of cards may call it what you hear, same idea. Basically, it is a recording device that records what is coming out of the speakers at the present time. Funnily enough, it's not counting up now, that's weird. Uh, my microphone is reflecting, obviously, audio activity, but stereo mix is not, that's kind of strange. Uh, anyway, I don't know why it's, it usually does, <laughs> I don't know why that's not working now. Anyway, so you need to get the stereo mix, uh, you know, recording device there. What you also want to do is go here to playback, look at your speakers and um, your properties here. Go to this levels tab and then here you want to make sure that your microphone is not muted. Make sure it's unmuted like that. Um, and then you should be able to hear uh, what you hear on the microphone that should come out your speakers just as uh, just as in the video that I showed you that I did with Windows XP some time back. Now, the other trick in Cam Studio is um, if you go to the options menu here, previously I said use this record audio from speakers option, but no, with Vista, every time I tried that, I got the stupid wave out, get select control failed, or whatever that stupid error message that everybody gets with Cam Studio when they try to use this option. No, instead, intuitively you'd think, no, you want to record from speakers? No, you want to record choose record audio microphone, which you have chosen here. Then we go to audio options and choose audio options for microphone. Make sure you've picked the stereo mix device. And then that does it. That acts as a, um, a recording device, you know, a recording device that actually records what comes out from the speakers as well as what goes into the microphone. And that's it. It's really that simple. So it's a combination of those settings in Vista, which I had been widely advised about, but nobody told me that you have to actually change this option here. Don't use record audio from speakers, use record audio from microphone. Nobody told me you had to do that, and so that's why I was stuck for a long time. Turns out it works perfectly. Nice. Um, what else? So that that's pretty much it. One thing I might note, uh, this could have been just my imagination, it seemed like the I installed the latest drivers for the Sound Blaster X5, and I think that might have changed to Windows Yellow or something like that because it actually seemed to enable the um, hearing the microphone from the speakers because that didn't work for me before, and it, it started working after I installed the X5 uh, drivers, and then after I ripped the card out of my machine and went back to the Realtek onboard chip, then it that started working with that. So it's weird. I have no idea. I I'm afraid I can't provide a um, a reasonably. Um, detailed or thorough explanation as to why it started working for me, but um, it's it's one of those, basically computers these days work by people shrugging their shoulders and saying, oh, I guess it's working now. So that's that's how the world works, kids. Uh, as much as I just obvious, the one thing that works well for Let's Playing is um, if you open up your volume mixer, you get a nice little uh, window like this, and you can actually drag these sliders up and down to control how, um, how much 
uh, sound level you get from each program. This is actually pretty important for DOSBox because DOSBox is loud when you use the stereo thing. Unless I'm balance, maybe I'm just balancing it wrong, but DOSBox is seriously loud when I use the stereo mix recording option. I, I dragged the slider, you don't see it here because I'm not running DOSBox now, but I dragged it down to literally 1% and that made it just barely tolerable. It left my voice just barely audible at anything. Even at 10%, it was completely drowning out my voice so that I couldn't be heard over the sound of the, the audio from the game running in DOSBox. So yeah, that's something good for Vista because balancing out sound levels has historically been a huge problem for us players because we can't really do it very well in XP and Vista makes it a lot easier. So I have to admit that's something good that Vista does. That's actually, um, and presumably when I haven't really tried Windows 7 yet, but I'm assuming it has the same thing, which is nice, I guess. Uh, so yeah, if you're looking for a sound card uh, and you want to make Let's Plays with it, make sure that you get one that has this kind of recording device that has this what you hear or stereo mix thing. It'll, uh, it'll save you a lot of headaches. Uh, to be fair, the Sound Blaster Y devices, they are, they're good, they're actually very high quality sound cards. They have excellent sound fidelity, uh, they're very well made. I got the, the cheapest one, which is the Extreme Audio, that happens to be the only model in the series that doesn't have the what you hear or stereo mix, it's like the $50 card, uh, and it's kind of the cheap ass card that uh, doesn't have those options. Every, a, apparently, according to Creative Labs, every other card in that series has that option, uh, but those cards are like a hundred to two hundred dollars US. I'm not spending that much on a sound card just to make Let's Plays. Uh, there are a lot of uh, cheap... It, it, the sound card market is kind of terrible because you can't really get... Um, there's really no such thing as a good reputable brand name sound card anymore. It's pretty much just Creative Labs which makes those ridiculously overpriced cards and then there's a bunch of little stupid cheap cards that are like ten or twenty bucks and those are pretty iffy. They, um, they may give you decent sound. If you get a, you, if you can find one that gives you decent sound, that's great, but they are not likely to have these um, what you hear recording devices, so that uh, may be an impediment if you're trying to make Let's Plays with them. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of terrible. I understand why um, the sound card market is tanked, because Realtek makes pretty reasonably functional sound chips that come built right into most of their boards now. And so why would people spend extra money for a sound card? So you pretty much either have to be absurdly cheap and sell a $10 sound card for people who didn't get onboard sound, or uh, go the creative route and uh, sell a $100 sound card that's backed by some gamer, and that is, you know, way more than most people will ever need, and is probably, you know, is high quality and is probably still overpriced for the quality that you get. So I'm, I'm going to just stick with my onboard chip for now and hopefully this will enable me to uh, make let's plays on my Vista machine which is good because the whole reason I got my Vista machine is because it has a, uh, a 500 megabyte hard drive which is important for me because I fill up my hard drive space fast and I have a machine that I was making let's plays on so the, uh, the hard drive is full I couldn't make any more videos with it uh, unless I burned them off but I just I got tired of trying to like back up huge video files onto CDRs or DVDRs it's, you know, the files are huge and it takes too long it's just uh, I, I am too Jewish to have the patience for that. So, uh, does this mean that I'm going to be making more videos in the near future? It may be the case. I'm not, you know, I can't promise anything. I'm not guaranteeing something, but uh, you may be seeing more videos now that I apparently can do proper Let's Play audio in my new machine with hundreds of gigabytes of hard drive space. All right, I have been talking and not doing anything. I've not even been moving the mouse. So to make up for that, let me move the mouse around a little bit. There we go. That's very exciting. All right, folks. Uh, thank you for listening to me babble as usual. And I will talk to you later. Bye-bye for now.